Is this the worst PA for acoustic singer-songwriters? Hey everybody, Jay Sound, welcome back to the channel. So uh, I play quite a few solo gigs every year, uh, basically just uh, acoustic singer-songwriter style, uh, do covers, I do some original songs, and I don't like to drag a huge PA with me and set it all up. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll get one of those column array type uh, setups. Uh, most of them are fairly compact and lightweight. And uh, so I was looking around and there's, there's quite a few available, but the one that seemed to fit the bill for me was this. This is the PV LN1263. And the reason I chose this particular uh, PA was that it has uh, an eight channel uh, mixer built into it. Uh, it's got four uh, XLR combi inputs. Now the reason that's important uh, for me is that sometimes uh, my friend will come and play with me and we'll do this acoustic duo. And so then he can have a mic, I can have a mic, and both guitars can be plugged in. And this also boasted a uh, you know, a mixer app that you could run off of your tablet. So I th was thinking that, well, you know, I'll stand with my, you know, cause I use my tablet to, uh, display my lyrics and I can control the mixer from there. Uh, runs the, uh, app runs off of Bluetooth. So you don't have to worry about setting up uh, a web server. Uh, like some of the mixers do, they have their own built-in web server, and so you access, you have to be on the network that that web server is on in order to uh, access the mixer or from the app. Well, this one is just uh, Bluetooth, so I thought that was uh, beneficial. And uh, another thing is this has uh, built-in effects, so you can do reverb, but you'll, you can only do the same effect across uh, all four. They're only on the four XLR channels. And then the XLR inputs have either mic, guitar, or line in. And then there's uh, a stereo, quarter inch stereo line level uh, input. Um, so that's considered your channel five and six. And then channel seven and eight, you have a mini, you know, 3.5 millimeter input uh, and then Bluetooth. So that's considered uh, two more channels. So that's where they get the eight uh, from. But it's really kind of unprecedented for a mixer like this to have four XLR inputs. Usually it's just two XLR inputs. Um, so <laughs> I couldn't find a ton of information out about this setup on uh, on the internet or on YouTube or anything. Um, I think there's uh, a vendor selling these. Maybe it's PV's own uh, video of a guy talking about it or whatever. But there's really no deep dives into um, this PA. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna deep dive into this PV LN1263 and see if it's suitable for uh, singer-songwriter, single duos, uh, small band. Um, I've tried it with a full band and already I can tell you that it's probably not going to work uh, for that type of thing because of uh, some feedback issues. Uh, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, another uh, usage for this that would probably be really awesome is if you were a DJ doing weddings or very small like audio presentations or whatever. This would work excellent for that and you'll see a demonstration of that here in a moment too. So let's get started and talk about this thing and see what it can do. Okay, so in case, uh, I'm pretty sure I already mentioned, this is the PV LN 1263. Uh, so when it comes, uh, it comes like this, you have a case for the, the column uh, portion that has the, the smaller speakers in it, that, like the tweeters. And then this is the sub and the power amp and the mixer 
all together. And this is a pretty heavy, uh, I'd say that's pushing 40 pounds maybe, you know, um, maybe, maybe closer to 50, maybe it's over 40, but it's, it's pretty compact. Um, it's a great sub. It can really, uh, put out a lot of sound. Uh, so then you get a, a bag here with your, your column. So you, th and this consists of the, the post for your speakers and that goes right in the top. And then your, I don't know if you want to call them satellites, not really satellites, but the speaker co columns. Now, another nice thing about this uh, amp or PA or whatever you want to call it, is that it has two um, speak on outputs in the back and each speaker has a speak on output and the uh, port for this, this pole, because the pole will run you know, the signal through to the speakers. So you don't have to use the speak on uh, cables. But if you wanted to put these on um, you know, speaker stands and have them off you know, from either side away from this uh, sub, you could do that. It even comes with two uh, speak on cables. I, don't, I think they're about 25 feet long. Uh, so that's kind of a cool benefit. So you can actually run it in stereo. And that was one of the things that I thought was a benefit for this particular um, amplifier, or PA rather, for this particular PA, is that you can run uh, stereo. All of the other uh, column array type uh, PAs that I saw, they would only run in mono. So, um, whether that's important to you or not, your mileage may vary. So there it is, there it's all, it's all set up. That was pretty easy. Then it just connects in the back with a regular D plug. So you plug that in the back. So we'll turn this on here. And it's got a little LED display on it. Um, so you can actually run this without the app. You don't need to use the app. Um, so then here you go, here are your channels. These are your four XLR channels. So you have mic, line, and guitar. And then your reverb controls are here. Um, this is your, you push this. Uh, this is push for DSP. And then you've got different options. You've got setup, so you can, this is where you can change it from stereo to mono. You've got mode, which is just some presets for EQ. I leave that at default. This is the volume for your sub. And then you can notch over to EQ and then set the EQ for each channel individually. So you do EQ, toggle over to channel one, hit that, and then you can raise the EQ. I'm not exactly sure if that just applies the EQ settings or if that's a mix of the EQ, like a wet dry mix. So we'll play around with that in a minute to see what that does. And then here's your reverb and you've got plate, plate two, room, room two, hall, hall two, chorus, flange, and that's it. I usually keep it at room or hall if I'm doing vocals in a big, you know, fairly big. And then app control, you can turn it on or off. And then this is config. This just changes the screen um, brightness, screen lock. So you can increase the brightness of the screen. And then you can reset it to factory. And then info, this is, tells you the firmware version. And I don't think there has been many firmware updates on it. This has been around for a few years. Um, 
and one of the complaints on the some of the discussion boards is that they have not uh, changed you know updated the firmware or updated the app so we'll get to that in a minute uh, so without further ado let's just plug it in uh, we won't use the app we'll just plug it in plug the uh, microphone in plug a guitar in and we'll run Bluetooth and do some tests Uh, I have the app installed. That's this PVLN series. Uh, you can get that from the App Store, or I'm assuming they have. It's also available for the an Android uh, tablet. This is an iPad. Uh, so then you can, uh, if you come over here and you turn on the Bluetooth. This is the little on-off switch. Turn on the Bluetooth, and you can see here. You can either switch between. Bluetooth or aux, and the aux is the 3.5 millimeter input. Uh, so then the Bluetooth will blink when you turn it on. So that means you can access it through your tablet. So we'll go to Bluetooth and we'll look for it. See, there it is, the LN1263. Okay, now it's connected. So let's just throw some music through it first. And we'll slowly bring up the level on the channel, and then we'll bring up the, the level on the main. Okay, so that's half. And as you can see from the decibel meter, not super loud. Okay, so uh, on the specs, they're calling this a 1200 watt and uh, it does 127 decibels maximum SPL. So let's crank it all up, all the way up and we'll put the decibel meter in front and we'll see what we get. Okay, so let's turn the volume on the channel all the way and then bring up the main all the way. Okay, so almost 120 if you're holding the meter right up to the speaker. But still plenty loud if you're doing a DJ uh, type thing. So let's check it out with uh, the guitar and vocals. Okay, so we'll turn down the main, we'll turn up the level here, and it does have uh, overload uh, LEDs, and that's what this is for the main, too. And it, I think it's got some built-in uh, overdrive protections on it. Okay, so let's see. We'll turn this up halfway. Check one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Check one, two, one, two. So we got a little bit of reverb on it. That reverb, I think, is a little aggressive sounding. Let's change that to room. That wasn't even up very high. That was pretty, pretty loud. Check, one, two, one, two. Check, check, check. 
One, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, check. That's a little dry. That's not too bad. That sounds pretty good. Let's, uh, let's check the other one out. Let's try plate. Check one, two. Oh, that sounds nice. Check one, two, one, two. Actually, I like that. That sounds good. So that's plate two. Okay, so we got to, this set to mic. Uh, we're gonna do guitar, so just a, an acoustic guitar. So this is uh, just a regular acoustic guitar. It's got an under saddle piezo pickup in it. So we'll see how that sounds. <laughs> Definitely getting some feedback with the, the the guitar. So I very rarely use the sound hole cover, but let's try that with this one and see if that'll help. Because that is the one thing I've noticed about this PA is that it does result in quite a bit of feedback. And I don't know if it's because these speakers are so shallow, you can actually hear uh, this PA from from behind it so so the sound hole cover seemed to help quite a bit one, two, check, one, two. so I'm getting quite a bit of volume out of this So this is a test with the uh, vocals and the guitar together. That is definitely more than enough volume for a small venue, um, and, and this is only halfway as far as the, the main volume on the, on the mixer goes, um, but I'm pretty sure if you'd cranked it up all the way, you'd probably get some massive feedback. Yeah, there. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. So that's really the issue that I found with this particular uh, PA is that it does it does have quite a bit of feedback. Um, obviously, I'm in a very small space. This is a double double car garage, um, so you'd want the speaker out in front of you quite a bit, and then that's probably where removing these satellite speakers and putting them on stands in running stereo might help. I'm gonna do a follow-up on that because I don't have any extra speakers right now. So I'm gonna try it out with Speak On Cables and I'm actually gonna try different speakers than these because you can run the Speak On Cables into a passive uh, speaker and maybe just use this as a sub and uh, uh, the mixer. So now uh, I want to get to something that is really kind of an issue with this setup and that's the app. So let's talk about the app. Okay, so the app 
you just download it from the App Store, like I said. And it's the LN series. And uh, it'll come into this uh, setup here. And you can run it in demo mode. So if you wanted to learn how to use it, just sitting at the couch or whatever, you could do that. Uh, then you want to go to this DSP, go to app, app remote control on, and there you go. Now you should be, okay, so then it connected on here. Now, the first thing that I encountered with this is I turned the volume up on the volume pots on the mixer and then tried to control it from here and the audio was absolutely terrible. So basically through a little bit of uh, internet searching, I did come up with something that I think seems like a reasonable explanation. So what they're saying is, is that you treat the volume pots, the volume knobs on the built-in mixer as gain knobs. So you gain stage uh, your uh, volume there and then control it here. So what I did to sort of do that is take your vocal mic and then just sing into it until you get one, two, one, two, until you see, and then you'll see the green. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, check, 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 one, one, one. See, it'll turn red when it's peaking. One, two, one, two, one, two, one. Okay, so then you can kind of hear it through here right now, but it's not very loud at all. And so that's what was that's what was confusing me because I had the volume set here and I had the volume halfway here and without the app on, it would have been really loud. But when you're running through the app, it's a totally different setup. So you wanna, hello, hello, see it's peaking. Hello, 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 one, two, hello, 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 one, two, one, two, hello, one, two, one, two. So that's your gain. Hello, one, two. And you do the same thing with the guitar, but we'll just throw that right there. Hello, one, two. Okay, so then you come back to your app. And then you can control the volume through the app. Hello, one, two, one, two, one. Check, check, check. And then you want to set the volume all the way up on the mixer and then just control the volume for the app from here. Hello, 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 check one, one, two, one. And it's not, it's never gonna be so starting to feed back, but through the app, I've noticed it never seems to be as loud through the app as it is, you know, using the onboard mixer and that is very bizarre i don't know why they've done it that way um, so but you do have a little bit more control through the mixer you can mute you can name stuff you can change the color you can put little photos in there i guess so then if you go to edit, then that gives you quite a bit of uh, control. This is your reverb. One, two, one, 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 two, check, check, check. And then this is, you get a balance control, so you can do left and right. And then you have equalizer and compressor, and there's a simple mode and a professional mode. And if you go into professional mode, then you go to edit and then that allows you to you know, control the EQ quite a bit more. And it's touch, a nice touch screen. One, two, one, two, one, two. So that obviously gives you 
a little bit more control and even even more volume too. It seems like it, you know, in a low cut. Turn that on or off just by touching them. One, two, check, check. And then you can even edit the, the master. This is where you can change the equalization. You can uh, adjust the volume of the sub. You can use the defined EQ, or you can set your own EQ. One, two, check, check. And then if you go back to the mixer, back to edit, then you also have a compressor. And that allows you to compress your vocals and even make up some gain. One, two, check, so. One, two, check, check, check. So like I said, as, uh, you know, performing as a duo, performing as a soloist, or even a small band with maybe a small drum kit, and, you know, as long as you don't need floor monitors and a huge amount of stage volume, you'll probably be okay. And as long as you can, you know, you don't want to be too close to that speaker or you will feed back. Uh, let's see. Okay, so what else? Um, so that's it as far as the uh, the uh, effects go. And then you just swipe over to the next one. And then this is already set to guitar. And then you can add your reverb. You can do the same thing with the equalizer, low cut, and notch some mids, and do whatever you need to do for your and then that would also help in a situation where you're experiencing feedback from your acoustic guitar is you can use this EQ to notch out. So actually with the sound hole cover, I'm probably not gonna feed back, but anyway. So if you want more shimmer in it. So let's see, and then and then you can control like if you have your if you have your music going through here, say like you're playing backing tracks then you can uh, control your Bluetooth from here as well. But it has to be set up. You still have to gain stage on the, on the device. So probably just turn that to, because uh, all that's like line level. I mean, it's Bluetooth, but it's, you know. Uh, so then you can, you can control that. And you can, change, you can add reverb <laughs> if you want. So you can add all, you know, compression and equalization to the uh, Bluetooth. So, so if you want to do backing tracks, then then that would work probably pretty well. And then that mutes. And then there's your reverb uh, controls, and you can choose the different. You know, and control the reverb for each channel from here too. And then you can create scenes, so if you want to save, you can do that as well. Okay, so uh, let's see, what else is there? This is uh, line, line input, so it's just a stereo, like if you had a, somebody with a keyboard or something like that, then you could connect that as well. So there we go, uh, I'm not sure what else to say about it. Uh, again, like I said, uh, the main thing that you wanna pay attention to 
is that if you use the app, it completely changes the way this mixer behaves. You have to set your gain, you have to gain stage on the built-in mixer and then control the volume from here. And you wanna dime your volume on the mixer and then control the mass, you know, the master volume, and then you wanna control the master from there. And it just seems to me, I mean, uh, I mean, I guess I could crank up the Bluetooth and see if it actually is true or not, but it seems to me that you don't get as much volume running through the app. So now the Bluetooth is dimed out and the main volume on this is dimed out. So let's crank it up. Okay, I stand corrected. It's just as loud through the app as it is. Uh, as long as you have everything, you know, dimed out, it's just that the, those XLR inputs, that's where it changes. That's where you have to set uh, the, you know, because if you, if you turn the volume all the way up to where you're redlining, on this mixer and then you try to control the volume of the vocals through here it's it it breaks up it's just it's you know you're peaking so it's it's really bad so that was kind of what confused me and that's why i thought i wasn't getting as much volume out of here and i never did a test with the with the bluetooth but obviously the bluetooth seems to be just as loud through the app um, so there you go that's uh something to be aware of if you purchase uh, one of these, um, when I first got it, I was like, wait a minute, why isn't this working? And there's nothing concise in the instructions that tell you how to do that. So you want to make sure that you set it, you gain stage it on the built-in mixer and do your levels in the app if you're using the app. And then if you switch away from the app, then you're basically all your volume comes from, you know, I think it has maybe built in gain staging at that point. Not exactly sure. It's just, it's kind of an odd thing how it works. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I got for this thing. It's, it's pretty nice. Like I said, the sub is pretty heavy and it doesn't come with a cover, which is kind of a drag. Uh, these things are super lightweight. It's so it's kind of a compact, uh, setup. It's definitely uh, great for a uh, singer-songwriter, uh, a duo. Um, like I said, you just want to watch your feedback. You'll definitely need probably a sound hole cover for an acoustic guitar because uh, you can't push the volume very high uh, with an acoustic, especially if you're fairly close to this thing. And a lot of like coffee shops and stuff like that, you're probably going to be pretty close to it. You want to be, be, be behind it as much as you can but you're probably going to want to invest in a sound hole cover because I've, I seem to have feedback all the time with the guitar, unless you're pushing the volume really low, but you can notch it out with that, uh, that EQ too bad. It's not a graphic EQ. That would be great if it was, um, again, if you use it like for a party or something, this thing is just incredible. I think I'm going to keep it, use it out, uh, use it outside in the summertime, um, for parties or whatnot. Uh, I think it would be perfect for that. Uh, the sub is really nice. It's got a really low, you know, it, it just adds so much to the sound uh, with the sub. And these speakers are pretty, pretty loud and pretty clear for being, you know, fairly small. I think these are like two or three inch uh, horns in there. Um, so anyway, I just want to do that again uh, because there wasn't a lot of information about this online. Uh, and since I, you know, kind of, struggled with it a little bit when I first got it, then uh, maybe wanted to spare somebody uh, that trouble. And then the other day, uh, my band, my full band, 
which is the drums and all that stuff. We, we were in here. I had left the band and sold, actually I traded a bunch of my audio gear and then I had bought this because I was going to go back to doing solo stuff and then got into another band. So we needed uh, a PA for practice. So we tried to set, th we set this up to try to use it uh, for practice and it just couldn't handle, I mean, the feedback was immense. So keep that in mind too, if you think you're gonna be able to use this in a full band type setting, you might not be able to because we just could not control the feedback uh, with, with this at all. So I, I think it must be the way the speakers are, are built or just the way they disperse. I don't know, I'm not an audio engineer or audio professional, but uh, you'll definitely get some feedback uh, if you try to use it in a full band situation. So anyway, there you go. That's all I've got for you. Thanks for tuning in. Jace Allen, Jace Allen Guitar. We'll see you next time.